Every year, in that weird lull between Christmas and New Year, where most people are binging Netflix, rarely stepping out of their houses, let alone their pajamas, 400 tracers travel from all over Europe, and in recent years, even further, to attend For the Love of Movement, one of parkour's premier events held just outside of Amsterdam. For the Love of Movement actually consists of two events, a summer edition and a winter one. The winter edition generally seems to sit higher on most people's rankings, and for me, it's always been a personal favorite to attend. This year, I wanted to take a deeper look into how Jump Free Run, the organizers of this event, keep it running so smoothly, and why people would fly thousands of miles to sleep in what is effectively a refugee camp in a giant sports hall. So, we are finally here, outside what is rather an unassuming building, but this is where Jump Free Run hold for the love of movement, winter and summer. Summer they use the outdoor section, but it's freezing, so we're staying inside. We're gonna go in, check it all out. I know they're building, we're here a day early, so we'll go see what they're up to. There's this level of consistency where everyone is used to coming to the same hall. It always happens here, so it's very familiar. But the course, the layout changes every year, and every year it seems to get better and better. So many possibilities. What's your favorite thing about coming here? Favorite thing about coming here is probably meeting up with everyone again. Because the parkour community is so spread out, we don't get to see each other a lot. So when we do get to see each other, it's always like so much fun. This year they have more equipment, they've got more scaffolding, and it just means there's more and more training options, and you can't get bored here. That was awful. Huh? That was awful. Land on your arches. Yeah. So what's going on right now is this uh, kind of weird grace period before all the main crowds arrive where anyone who's already here gets potentially the best training they're going to get all weekend. As much as the event obviously needs hundreds of people to make it worthwhile putting on. Obviously they need the ticket money to, to put on an event like this. Having however many hundreds of people training on this stuff does not necessarily give the best training environment. It's very, very busy, but it, it also makes it such a social event. The next couple of days is just gonna be filled with friends sort of reuniting and rekindling friendships and also new friendships being created and people training together and just generally a really sick time where sort of the actual training is not potentially the, the biggest focus. So, we're here, officially day one of For The Love and Movement Winter, with Mark Van Sweeten. You run Jump Free Run, right? Yes, Jump Free Run is my company, I'm the founder. Yep. It consists of a lot more people, of course. Why did you even put on For The Love and Movement in the first place? Well, that was back in 2012, and I wanted to do an event to get the entire Dutch community together. Yep. And, uh, uh, whilst doing that, already a few international groups uh, showed some attention and that was actually the beginning of what now is For Love Movement. How do you put it on? There's so many different aspects. How do you build a relationship with this 
arena where we've been here for, for years now and every year they let you come back and how do you get all of these volunteers to come and help out? You literally have guys cleaning toilets, serving food, emptying bins. How do you inspire them and keep that whole machine kind of spinning? Getting people to, to understand that we do this for the love of movement and yep. we do this for our community and we have amazing, uh, an amazing crew that's been with me for over 10 years and uh, all these guys are growing up and growing up to be actually leaders within our community and uh, working together very closely with that group uh, may, creates a vibe that everybody wants to join in on the crew. What are you doing right now? Well, there's not enough room for people to sleep, so we need to extend it. Do you help out here every year? Uh, I tried to, like, I started last year in the winter edition. Mostly because, well, I get to go to the event for free, plus I don't mind helping out building the setup and that kind of stuff. So, so basically you get free events in return for helping. Yeah. Yeah. That's Which good. Is pretty, pretty reasonable. It's good enough. Easy. Yeah. And there's free food, so I'm happy. <laughs> Providing the yeah. leadership opportunities for people to sort of exactly and develop then. themselves and find careers. We actually have people doing like internships, and part of their internship is like oh, really? joining the event as a crew member, wow. and they learn a different kind of responsibilities. Of course, like yeah, cleaning, yeah, uh, safety aspects, uh, building aspects. We've been doing the winter event since 2014, and uh, it's been sold out every edition. Yeah. So actually, this year is the first time that we uh, actually put the numbers a little bit down, saying it's getting too crowded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah that, that you, you still want people to have the opportunity to train. It's interesting to see that you're not trying to ruin the event by just kind of aiming for profit. You are taking that step to try and keep it as pure as possible and keep it into a solid training atmosphere. I mean, it is obviously busy, but you you try and make it so that the focus is on training and everything like that. Well, focus is, is it, it's on community actually. Yeah. It's not only on training, it's getting together, sleeping together, eating together, uh, having fun together, going to the beach, doing fun stuff at the event that's not only based on the actual training and doing runs and stuff. Of course, that's a big part of it and that's the that's the core of the event. Yeah. We still want to keep it that way. But it's a non-commercial event. All the, uh, uh, the profit actually we make with the event goes back into the event. Okay. After a few years uh, of making some extra money because we sell out, uh, now this year we have a lot of new obstacles and stuff, so that, go, that goes directly back into the community. You obviously help us out and you help many other brands by enabling us to have pop-up shops, which in turn allows us to have more exposure, face-to-face -face contact with customers collaboration and creates yeah, conversation. That's, that's the whole idea. That's, we're doing it together and uh, we obviously need the brands as well to be present at an event. Uh, the same goes for athletes. Uh, we have been supporting athletes from the beginning, uh, but athletes are also supporting our event because people want to look up to their idols and come train with them and uh, have an opportunity to meet them. Uh, so it, yeah, that works. Night one of For the Love of Moving Winter. We're gonna uh, we're gonna take a walk into the slums, into the the kind of the chaos that is the hammocks and sleeping mats, and have a little chat with some of the residents and just kind of work out why they would actually want to come and sleep in this situation and, and put up with the noise and the chaos that goes on here and, and really work this thing out. Because personally, that doesn't look too fun. Here we have Orlando Fat. So how many times have you been to the Love Moving before? First time. First time. Are you enjoying it? Uh, yeah. When did you arrive? It's a bit packed. Yeah. When did you arrive? Today? Yeah. Oh, so you haven't actually slept here yet? Nah. How are you feeling about sleeping in this, given that there is literally someone's ass about eight inches from your face? <laughs> Very good. Very good. Is there someone? Who is this? Oh, hello. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Were you asleep? 
No. Oh, okay, we're all good. No, we're gonna clamber up top and see if we can speak to someone. The thing is, right, is I am quite a weak bladder, and at night, if I was sleeping up here and I need to get to the toilets, which are miles that way, I would struggle. Like well, trying to shimmy across the rail. <laughs> wow, how the hell am I getting Yeah, but I don't have any clothes. Though. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> so we have stumbled into the German camp. How many times have you been to the Love Movement? Uh, twice. Twice. So yep. why do you keep coming back? You learn a lot of new people here. You learn new, or you meet some good guys, like you, for example. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the vibe, right? Yeah, and the vibe. Yeah, um, yeah, it's the vibe, it's the atmosphere, and it's everything. I mean, it's it's the passion here, yeah, and you have really fun. You can train with other guys from different countries, and maybe they give you some advices for your training, so that you improve your training skills, and that's good. So. You, you have it in your head, just, and you feel it, and you can't sometimes describe it with words. You just do it. You feel it in your body, yeah, and you just move for the movement. And it's worth sleeping in this. Yes, of course. We are here to have fun. My English is not so good, no so worries, sorry. No worries, Have so, a good night. Have a good then, night. <laughs> little help, yeah, little you, help you, you said more than anyone else, so you're good. Oh, no! You killed Thank it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, my hoodie strings are caught. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it still recording? Yeah. And um, with that, I think we'll head back to our bunk beds in the nice warm room. <laughs> While many are put off by the crowds, you can always find individuals in the middle of all the chaos taking on personal battles to overcome massive challenges. For the Love and Movement after parties are a legendary part of the event. However, definitely something worth experiencing properly rather than watching on YouTube. On the final day, hangovers reign supreme. Some try to squeeze in last minute training as other, more helpful attendees assist in the teardown of the structures. By the end of the day, everyone would have left and the hall will be back to normal. The work ethic and dedication of Mark, Philip, Jump Free Run and all of their volunteers is nothing short of inspiring. I know for sure there's people in our community who want to put on an event like this. And it's very intimidating to see something of this size and think like, I want to do an event, but it, I, can't, I obviously can't start something that big, so there's no point starting. But it's like, what advice would you give to start small and then to... Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs>
don't get don't go into this now it's <laughs> I, I, be, I think people don't realize the, the amount of work, yeah. hassle and pressure actually it is to put on an event like this because it's all fun and games when you're here, yeah. but we have like five or six people that are already starting work like five months before. Yeah, and yeah, we do yeah. Two, two events a year, so basically we have one month off. And of course that's not the real physical hard labor, but it's like organization-wise, contacting the venue, creating relationships with flyers and all that kind of stuff, it's really, yeah, that's yeah, really yeah. important. It takes a lot of time and we do it. For very true, movement. very true. Nothing, nothing else. So, so not, not something to rush into, but... Yeah, but my advice would be just start small, get yeah. a group of people together and um, yeah. just, just do it, just start. Let's be honest, you're unlikely to get the best training of your life for the Love Movement. But if you look at these events less as training opportunities and more as chances to make friends, find inspiration, whether it be in movement or in business, and most importantly, to experience the parkour community at its most pure, then you'll never be disappointed. 